That's exactly what I was thinking as I booted up Uncharted Drake's Fortune for the first time ever and decided to go straight into crushing difficulty. What? Now I knew that the Uncharted franchise was considered a classic, but it was one of many games over the years that I just never got round to playing and finally took the plunge into it recently. And I've got to say, I'm already looking forward to playing Uncharted 2. Let's go! But before that, let's tackle Drake's fortune and earn the 45 trophies that will earn me the Platinum Trophy. So the story begins with Nathan Drake opening a coffin of his ancestor and finding a lockbox with a little book inside which gives clues to a lost treasure on a faraway island. But before we can get too excited, we're approached and boarded by pirates and then we're tasked with fighting them off. After a couple of whiffed shots, we then surprisingly popped five heads in a row for the first trophy of the game, Headshot Expert. The boat then gets set alight. Nathan and Alina, who is filming the whole thing for some network show or something, have to dive overboard, but luckily for them, Sully has arrived to save the day. After a lengthy cutscene where they discuss the contents of the little book, and the location of the treasure, they decide to ditch Alina and head towards the island. Once we arrive at the island, we grab our first of 61 collectibles. Due to being on crushing difficulty, I wasn't too interested in grabbing them all on my initial playthrough, and realised at a later time that I'd already missed one. But for picking up that first, we got the trophy, First Treasure. We head inside the ruins and solve a few pretty straightforward puzzles and find where the treasure used to be, the gold statue of El Dorado. We follow the marks on the floor from where it had been dragged, which leads us back outside and near the top of a huge waterfall, which with a submarine perched on the edge. It was so beautiful, I threw myself off the edge. We head inside of the sub and we find a map leading us to our next objective. We accidentally trigger a torpedo, no big deal, and head on out where Sully has been captured by this guy, Roman, and his men. We have the map taken off of us, and then Roman shoots Sully. We know he ain't dead, but the game wants us to think he is. The torpedo that we set off earlier explodes, and gives us the distraction so that we can escape. As we're belting it through the jungle, we bump into Alina, who had been following us, and thankfully, she has a gun that we can put to use. After being welcomed to crushing difficulty with about 6 deaths in a row, I then got another trophy for 20 headshots. After fighting our way through the ruins, we come across a very poorly camouflaged jeep, which Nathan and Alina hop into and escape. Just like an Old Spice advert, now we're in a plane, which conveniently gets shot out of the air, but not bad enough for a few moments of dialogue. Knife jumps out last and his parachute has got a hole in it, so we drop like a sack of spuds and land nowhere near Alina did. As we then make our way through the jungle, we die a lot. Thanks to how the game tracks kills, after one of many restarted checkpoints, while using the pistol, I got the trophy, 50 kills, PM 9mm. After that last trophy, I died a fair few more times before beginning to finally make progress. It was in this area that I managed to find my 10th collectible and I got the trophy, Novice Fortune Hunter. We eventually come to a section where we find half of the shot down plane stuck in the trees, but of course there are a ton of enemies here too. Again, I died a hell of a lot. But while here, and using the AK-47, I got the trophy, 50 kills, AK-47. And shortly after, with a few restarted checkpoints chucked in for good measure, we then got the 100 headshots trophy. With the area finally clear, 
We climb into the plane and we find our map still intact. One of the enemies had just climbed down from the plane, so that dude must have been Stevie Wonder to miss it. We continue through the jungle until we reach a section scattered with booby traps. It was here that we managed to take out three enemies with one explosion. For the trophy, Triple Dino Might. We'll have to do that some more at a later time for another trophy, but for now we continue into the fortress, which is where we saw the remains of Alina's parachute, so we know she's around here somewhere. Lo and behold, we spot her in a window across the way, and have to fight tons of enemies in order to get to that part of the area. We then find ourselves going underground, and we head into what is referred to as the Blue Room. And I fucking hated this section. I must have spent about 30 minutes here, dying over and over again to the point that I was pulling my hair out. It was here I began to get worried for the rest of the game. After quite a while of struggling, we finally made it through and back up to the surface where we see Alina in the distance, but she's in the crosshairs of an enemy. So we pop his head before being knocked out by an explosion and wake up inside a prison cell. Alina comes in clutch and saves us by tearing the cell wall off and we jump on the turret while Alina shows us her best Colin McRae driving. Rest in peace. Considering this was crushing difficulty, I was quite surprised at how quick I got through this section, especially as if you didn't take out an enemy vehicle quick enough, you were dead. The chase ends with Alina almost driving us off a cliff. Bloody typical woman driver. I'm only joking, put the pitchforks away. But we're left with no choice other than to reverse ourselves over the edge and into the water below. As we climb out of the water in a new area, we pop a couple more heads and get the trophy, 250 headshots. We then jump onto a jet ski to ride through the drowned city with enemies everywhere and I took my sweet time, especially after dying so quickly the first couple of attempts. We have a little puzzle section where we have to open a gate before hopping back onto the jet ski again. After finally passing that section, Naif and Alina part ways and while using the SMG we picked up the trophy 50 kills micro 9mm. In the exact same section, because I was dying here a ton, I also picked up the trophy for 30 kills with grenades. And then 50 kills with the Moss 12 shotgun. We finally get through that section and end up meeting back up with Alina again as we head inside an old library and in here we find an old shipping manifest of when El Dorado was taken and moved. Nath and Alina separate again and we find ourselves in a very open room and I thought this was going to take a while but I managed it first try with some less than admirable or as I like to call them fancy footwork. Alina then shows us video footage that she's captured, which shows Sully is still alive and helping that rat Roman find out where El Dorado is. We then found our 20th collectible, which netted us the trophy, Intermediate Fortune Hunter. And then a short while ahead, in the same area, while using the Magnum, we got the trophy, 20 kills, Wes 44. We hop back on the jet ski again, this time however we have to tackle rapids while dodging or shooting explosive barrels and thankfully only have to deal with a handful of enemies on our way up to the monastery which is the next location of where El Dorado might be. 
it's here we are introduced to a new type of enemy in the armoured soldiers. Not quite as simple as a single headshot anymore. Of course, I died here a fair few times as well. Big shout out to whoever got me on this attempt. After passing that previous section, it felt like I was out of the frying pan and into the fire. But with new enemies comes new guns. And while using the Desert Eagle, I got the trophy for 20 kills. We then head into some sort of library, where we find Sully, and he explains that he's been working for Roman against his will, and joins back up with us. We separate from Alina and Sully to try and find a way out, and find ourselves in a huge open church area. Here we got the trophy for our 50th kill, with the M4. And once we were past that church section, we found ourselves outside in the graveyard, and it was here that I got the trophy for 30 kills with the Dragon of Sniper. And in the exact same location, we then pick up another weapon related trophy for getting 50 kills with the 92 FS pistol. We then head into another building over the far side of the graveyard, when Elena steps on a trap and Sully gets left outside. Nath and Elena then start walking around inside the vault and have to follow numbered tiles on the floor in order to progress. This area was so annoying just because it was slightly boring for the most part. We got cornered by a couple of Roman's men before Uncharted switches it up. I'm sorry Uncharted, I wasn't familiar with your game. We find ourselves stuck inside a pit waiting for Alina to drop us a rope and she decides she's going to take her sweet time with it while she, I don't know, filing her nails or whatever it is she's doing. We get attacked by creatures and there is loads. Alina finally drops the rope and we climb up to safety before then heading into some form of bunker and we separate from Alina to find the generator in order to turn the power back on. Here I found my 30th collectible and got the trophy Proficient Fortune Hunter. As we head into the underground section of the bunker area, we find the generator room, and when we start the power back up, an alarm starts sounding, drawing attention from a shit ton of them creatures. Here, I grabbed my 30th kill with the MP40 for the trophy. We then come across a projector that is playing a reel, showing a zombie-like Spanish soldier and a note describing that El Dorado is actually cursed. We manage to escape the bunker and head back to where we left Alina, and to absolutely nobody's shock, she has been captured by Roman. We have to fight through a bunch of enemies, both human and creature, before heading back to the surface. We head back to the church and open up a secret passageway beneath the altar. We then find El Dorado, but Roman and his goons show up and take it for themselves. Roman opens the statue, guess it's more of a casket at this point, despite being warned about the curse. He gets cursed, ta-da! In his zombie-like state, he runs at one of the other guys, who then domes him. Congratulations, you're now the bad guy. As the new bad guy takes Alina captive, and his goons connect the statue to a helicopter wire, we have to run past all of the enemies possible, shoot a few of them, and then jump onto the statue itself, as it's been hoisted. Alina boots one of the goons holding her captive, and he conveniently headshots the pilot. The helicopter and all people present crash land on a local boat. It was then just a case of taking out a few enemies, chase after Corporal Douchebag, rinse and repeat until we manage to get a hold of him, punch him a few times, and this begins a cutscene where we get four trophies. 
One for each difficulty, including the main one that we wanted. Charted, crushing. Haha, ha, see you later, Sergeant Shitpants. With the bad guy safely swimming with the fishes, the last thing to complete the story is Sully showing up on his little boat with a few barrels of gold, and then they all sail off into the sunset. But we've still got a fair few trophies to tick off and the rest of the collectibles to find, the latter being what I concentrated on first. So due to being on crushing difficulty, I didn't really get into many fist fights, so the first trophy I ticked off since completing the story was Brutal Brawler, for killing 5 enemies with a brutal combo. I then got hold of the M79 grenade launcher and got my 30th kill for another trophy. Before then going on to find a precursor orb from Jack and Daxter which counts as one of the 61 collectibles but also has its own trophy, Relic Finder. A couple more collectibles later I then accumulated 40 of them and got the trophy Professional Fortune Hunter. Then, on a different chapter, while still concentrating on the collectibles, I came across the perfect place to get two trophies. 20 kills with gunfire while hanging, and 10 kills with grenades while hanging. Got me the trophy Hangman. And Grenade Hangman. I then managed to find my 50th collectible on a different chapter and got the trophy Expert Fortune Hunter. And then during one of the later chapters where the game turns into Left 4 Dead, we'd only got two collectibles left to grab, but before grabbing them we managed to get 20 kills while shooting from the hip for the trophy Run and Gunner. Before then getting our 60th collectible and 61st collectible. Due to the strange relic from earlier, we got the trophies Master Fortune Hunter. And Master Thief Collection. I then tackled the three speedrun trophies. Me being the imbecile that I am, I tackled the first of the three chapters on the wrong mode and was concerned as to why the trophy hadn't popped. Once I realised the error, I put the correct mode on and tackled them all properly. All were pretty easy to complete. First was the trophy, These Walls Can't Stop Me, for beating Chapter 5, The Fortress, in under 10 minutes. Then, up a short creek without a paddle for completing the jet ski rapids level in under 5 minutes. And then a speedy reunion for completing the chapter 16 in under 7 minutes.
With still a number of miscellaneous trophies to get, the next one I obtained was for getting 20 kills while using a Brutal combo. This got me the trophy, Brutal Slugger. Then in true bomb chop fashion, I wasn't recording as and when I went onto the photo mode for the trophy B-roll for Elena. The next trophy I tackled required me to get 75 kills without dying, another one that I'd missed due to playing through initially on crushing difficulty. After going through a couple of chapters from start to finish, I finally got the 75th kill and the trophy Survivor. I then reloaded the very first chapter to make it as easy as possible in order to get 5 brutal combos in a row for the trophy Brutal Expert. I then jumped back onto chapter 4 and weakened 5 enemies with gunfire and finished them off with a punch for the trophy Steel Fist. Then I managed to get 10 of the same type of kill in a row which got me the trophy Steel Fist Expert. A little further into the same chapter I repeatedly reloaded this specific checkpoint and continuously took this guy out while in stealth until I got my 50th stealth kill which got me the trophy Master Ninja. And then just a little further ahead in the same chapter and with the end in sight we had to get another 4 triple kills with explosives. We grabbed the M79 grenade launcher and took out this set of enemies until the trophy popped for Dynamite Master. And with all that done, the shiny Platinum Trophy. Whoop whoop! With the Uncharted Platinum complete, I can honestly say that I'm majorly disappointed with myself for not experiencing this classic earlier. Let me know if you think I should tackle Uncharted 2, and in the meantime be sure to like the video, subscribe if you're not already, and check out some other videos from my channel that are on screen now. Peace out.